Hello and welcome to National Drive Electric Week here in Ithaca. From September 26th to October 4th, we will be having many programs and today we'll start with Electric Vehicle 101. For those who wish to know more about electric vehicles and not sure where to start, uh, we'll be covering all the basics and all the common questions asked about EVs or electric vehicles. Some fun pop quiz. True or false, can I charge my EV at home with just a normal outlet? Yes, you can. This is level 1 charging. It uses 120 volts and provides about 4 miles per hour of charging. So this is fairly slow. It's what they call a trickle charge. But if you are, if your, your EV has a small battery pack, this should not be a problem. But even if you have a larger battery pack and you, you drive less than 40 miles a day, which is most Americans, uh, what you're doing is just topping up your car, the battery pack in your car. Um, you will most of us would not be driving uh, I don't know 120 100 to 200 miles a day and having to charge from zero and having to wait 48 hours before it's fully charged so but definitely if you have a bigger battery pack um, you might want to consider upgrading it to a level two charger how many charging stations are there in Ithaca 23 charging stations and rising so there'll be more and more charging stations all these charging stations is within the 10 mile radius of the city this is a map of the city of Ithaca showing you those charging stations many of these uh, charging stations are level 2 chargers and it will provide 12 to 25 miles per hour of charging I was going to say that PlugShare is a, a site that you can use to plan your route if you're planning to go outside of Ithaca. And there are a lot of, as you can see, there are a lot of charging stations along important interstates. Possible amount of incentive available for qualifying EVs. Up to $9,500. So this is a combination of the federal tax credit of $7,500 and the Drive Clean New York or the New York State rebate of $2,000. This amount depends on the, the EV model that you choose. The more electric range, the bigger battery pack, the higher the incentive. But another thing to be aware of is that the federal tax credit, it decreases after a manufacturer, that manufacturer exceeds 200,000 in EV sales. So Tesla and General Motors are the two car manufacturers that has sold more than 200,000. So I think for Tesla, they there's virtually no more um, federal tax credit, so you won't get $7,500 anymore. Highest electric range per charge available in today's models. And bonus if you can get guess which EV model. So a lot of people complain like, well, you know, I like the idea of electric vehicle, but I just is turned off by the fact that it has low electric range. Well, these days, the EV, EVs that we're talking about have a pretty decent range. And the Tesla Model S long range has 335 miles. How many EV models are available in New York? You'll be surprised that there are actually 44 models available on the market. 26 of them are plug-in hybrids and 18 of them all electric models. And here they are in graphical form. So you can see that there's a lot of choices between the 20,000 and 40,000 range. And if you look at the vertical axis, um, a lot of the reasonably priced ones, the $30,000 ones, are have at least 200 of electric range. So, you know, um, they, the prices have really come down by a lot in the past five to 10 years and will continue to drop to the point that Electric vehicles will be the same price as cars with gasoline engine. I'm not ready to go all electric. There, are, there is the option of going with plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. So these cars still have a gasoline engine, a small gasoline engine that complements the, the, the battery. So also a smaller battery pack. And once you run the battery pack runs out of energy, um, it switches to the gas engine pretty seamlessly and these are this is this is the kind of uh, vehicle EV that's perfect for those who need to travel uh, more than 40 miles a day or have a lot of long distance travel to do and this graph compares the Hyundai Elantra with the Hyundai Ioniq and the Hyundai Ioniq has two types of EVs the plug-in hybrid and the all-electric versions 
and you'll find that the total cost of ownership is very reasonable. Again, another comparison, monthly costs, if you're borrowing money as a car loan, the Hyundai Ioniq All-Electric is also very reasonable. Um, just a quick overview of the past, present, and future. Um, you'll be surprised, or may, may not be surprised, that uh, EVs were invented more than 100 years ago. So they were invented in 1832. And actually, a third of total vehicles on the road in the United States were EVs. This was in the early 1900s. And by the 1920s, because a combination of factors such as cheap Texas crude oil and also the invention of the Model T, which is a lot more affordable and easier to, to operate, you know, electric vehicles became, you know, not as popular and uh, gasoline vehicles dominated for the next hundred years. By the 1970s, where a lot of big factors came into play that made people rethink electric vehicles. One was terrible air pollution in major cities. And as you know, air pollution can cause lung cancer, asthma. So not something that you would, you know, just say, oh, whatever. And also, you know, we were buying a lot of oil from foreign countries. And then, you know, it, it is not nice to be at a whim of these, uh, of, of this market. Um, especially when they do an oil embargo. And of course, sometimes there's a gasoline, gasoline shortage. So you see the long lines at the gas station. And of course, policies like the Clean Air Act in the 1970 revived interest in electric vehicles. Um, but we had 60 years to catch up with the gas vehicles. And it doesn't help that it was hurt by recession. There was progress that was starting to, to be made in battery research. And that was uh, in the 70s that the lithium-ion battery was invented by uh, Dr. Stanley Whittingham. And he actually was one of the Nobel laureates uh, who was celebrated last year um, for his work on battery research. And the timeline for 1990s to early 2000 is that uh, the Toyota Prius, which is a very popular hybrid, was first introduced and was ranked by the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, as one of the cleanest vehicles. And by 2010, the Nissan Leaf, this humble green electric vehicle sold 400,000 worldwide by 2019. And Tesla, having started out in the late 1990s to early 2000, caught up fairly quickly with the Tesla Model S, 260,000 sold globally. Um, as I have mentioned earlier, um, the cost of batteries will continue to go down and this would help with prices of EVs and make it more comparable to gasoline vehicles, making it also easier for people to make that decision. Well, should I buy an EV or not? I mean, the price would be would factor in into that decision. So the prediction is that by 2025, the battery prices are expected to fall between $125 to $150 per kilowatt hours, and then this will allow EVs to compete with gas vehicles. Some countries are fairly confident in this projection that they are already making policies like by 2035, all new cars sold in Europe to be all electric, and France is even more aggressive about their goals, 2040, to ban petrol and diesel cars. And there you have it, Electric Vehicle 101. What do you think? Will you consider EVs in your next vehicle purchase? Still not sure? Well, we have more educational content coming your way, virtual test drives of different types of electric vehicles. We also have contests for those who are interested in submitting pictures of themselves in front of their cars or electric vehicles. Tell us why you love your car. And if you like to drive and enjoy the fall foliage, do join us for a drive from Stewart Park to Summerhill Brewery on October 4th at 11 a.m. Um, we hope to see you there. Well, uh, thank you for listening today, and um, this is Lee signing out. Thanks.